Hello, my name is James and I'm going to be your inspector today. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly install an SP-2C or is what we call a secondary pedestal. Now you may be wondering what this is about. We've had a lot of interest lately from homeowners who like to have their mast or their electrical mast on the side of their home that comes in overhead removed and put underground for either aesthetic purposes, weather purposes, or for whatever reason. So today we're going to walk through some of those things and hopefully we'll be able to answer some of those questions that you may have if you choose to do this. I've asked the contractor to go ahead and hold off his backfilling purposes so that I can explain to you what it is that we would be seeing under the ground. So prior to him backfilling this, what it is that we have under, the, under this gravel here is behind me you'll see a two inch steel riser. This is a 10 foot section that, is, that has already been put on the pole. He's dug a three foot, two inch ditch minimum. This ditch here was exactly 38 inches deep. And the reason for that is to accommodate the size of this green pedestal that goes inside here. It is the misconception that all secondaries have to be a maximum of 24 inches deep. While that may be true in some areas, and it is on our side as well, however, these pedestals require to be deeper because of the sweeps that come up inside there to be able to use our connections that we have. We have submergible connections that are quite large and they all get put together with all the wires inside the green pedestal. So we have to have these much deeper in order to be able to have the room to be able to put these connections together. So as I said before, we have this two inch riser steel, steel riser here bolted to the pole. And we also give you the, the straps and the standoffs that go on the pole. A lot of times I'll show up and somebody's used some nails that they may have had on their truck, sheetrock screws. Um, I've seen a multitude of things uh, coming up here. But whenever you contact me or, or someone who's doing this job, they will actually show up and go over these standards with you. And, and what they'll bring you nine times out of ten is something that looks like this here. This is just a typical lag bolt and we actually provide these as well. A lot of times we will also provide a ground rod and simply because you've already paid for the flat rate to have this put in so this is part of that, part of that uh, flat rate process. So whenever you contact the inspector, he will show up with that, a couple of these lag bolts, and kind of go over some of the uh, installation procedures with you. So we've already allowed him to go ahead and attach to our pole, and what is underground is a 24-inch steel galvanized sweep that's attached to our 10-foot section right here. And on the end of that 24-inch uh, radius galvanized sweep is a 24-inch PVC radius. But in between is this coupling right here. And this here screws onto the end of the 24 inch radius galvanized steel. And this in here is primered and glued to the 24 inch radius PVC. So on this particular project, the customer has installed two two inch PVC sweeps with the, with the pipe going back to the home. The reason why he has two in here because this is gonna be a 400 amp service. So he is parallel, paralleling two 200 amp services. We're gonna have a total of 400 amps on the other side and the meter back coming inside the home. And what we also require on our end are these pulling bells and we also encourage the homeowner or the electrician to also put these pulling bells to make his installation of his wire safer and much easier to pull in as well. So what we have here now is I'd like to talk about the actual base and how it looks in here. It's nice and level, it's nice and clean. Our standards require one inch clean base rock. I've allowed this guy to go ahead and use just a three quarter inch dirty, which is fine because it's, it's gonna compact nice and our pedestal will sit nice on top of that. Again, that's a judgment call. You have to allow the inspector to be able to know what kind of aggregate you plan to use. Most generally, that one inch base that you have around is gonna be just fine. He had this around, this is gonna be fine for this particular installation. Another thing that I like to see here is the distance between the compacted aggregate and the actual ground level itself. Because if you have this put in properly and leveled and you have 16 inches, then I know that that pedestal is going to sit at ground level. So let's go ahead and have a look at that right quick. So we're looking at 16 inches right here at ground level. It's a little difficult to see because of the spool piles that's behind me. But we can also look on this side right here and you can see the 16 inches at ground level. And this is, this is what we're looking at. Once I put the actual pedestal inside the ground, I will look at that as well to see how it lays and contours with the ground itself. 
So now what we're going to do is I'm going to actually put the, the, the pedestal in place and you'll get to see where I measure to and how the product is supposed to look inside the ground. So now we went ahead and put the pedestal in place and I'm going to look at some of the measurements and we're going to kind of make sure that uh, everything looks appropriate the way that it should. Um, before the contractor will backfill, he'll also make sure that this is good and level and he'll pack in the, con or pack in the, the dirt all the way around it as well. So whenever I show up on the job site, this is really what I want to be able to see most of is when I open up this lid and I open it up and I look inside, I want to see a ground rod. I want to be able to see the tops of these sweeps and the measurements and also the pulling bell installed. And as long as I can see from the top the measurements that I have to have 12 inches from the top of this pulling bell to the level area of this lip of right through here, this is where I'm looking at, 12 inches, we're going to be just fine. Again, we have to have this type of clearance in there for our connections that go inside the box itself. It's a common misconception that because of our dome lid that we give you whenever you come and get them, they set up this high that those PVC pipes can stick up in there and all the connections be made there like you would see maybe in a Mediacom box or something like that or a phone pedestal. Again, this is for your benefit for one day maybe that dome lid will be removed, there'll be a flat lid upon here and you can be able to run right over the top of it with a lawnmower, not a tractor, not an excavator or anything like that. So now I'm going to allow the contractor to go ahead and backfill around this, compact it, make sure it's level. And before he does that, he's also going to be installing something that's going to give you an indication that the next person to come and digs this up, that there might be something in the way. So we always have them put some of this electric line. This electric line berry tape goes on all of our facilities, whether it be secondary or primary. We always have you cover up some of the pipe with a little bit of the earth or, or the uh, gravel, 12 inches and then we lay this across the top. We ask you that you don't wad it up or that it just throws in a ditch somewhere because you might be the next guy that comes and digs all this stuff back up and you're going to appreciate being able to see that tape. So now let's go ahead and put the lid on top, kind of give you an idea of what the finished product looks like. So I hope that this installation video has been helpful for you. As always, we ask you to be very careful and call and locate. You're going to need three days for those locates to be finished. Be sure and call 1-800-DIG-RIGHT in order to have that done because all the facilities in the area will be notified that you're going to be doing some type of excavation and they will come out and mark the facilities in the area. And as always, if you have any questions, please call 417-863-9000. And you can also call developer services at 417-831-8888. And that will get you a direct line to developer services and they can help you answer a lot of questions that you may have. So again, my name is James. I hope everything works out for you. If you got any questions, be sure and give us a call. Stay safe.